is going on YouTube the assist man I'm coming back at you guys with another Neverwinter YouTube video inside of this video man long awaited a lot of you guys have been asking me for my control wizard mod 16 builds that I use and all that good stuff so inside of this video that is what I'm going to give to you guys my specific control wizard mod 16 builds in Neverwinter so if you guys do enjoy this video please go ahead and take a moment and hit that thumbs up like button and if you have not subscribed to my channel please take a moment hit the subscribe button as well and do not forget to turn on notifications so anyway man without further ado let's go ahead and get into it now I feel like I've been testing out powers and builds and all kinds of stuff since Mod 16 came out on consoles. And I've came to the conclusion that what I'm about to show you is basically what I use and I'm not really going to change it. Because this is what works best for me and uh, it's probably going to work best for you as well. Now I'm going to try to keep this video as short as possible. So if you need to actually, you know, look at specific things, make sure you pause the video or re-watch it. Let's go ahead and get into the stats, the character sheet. Now, what you want to try to do is you want to try to roll as much intelligence as you can. Intelligence is going to give you your damage dealt, which is the main thing that is needed for control wizards to do damage. Your secondary stat should be charisma because charisma is going to give you critical chance, combat advantage damage and companion stat bonus. And then probably, you know, whatever else you want for the third thing, but most likely wisdom, because that's going to give you a lot of good things as well, like recharge speed and action point gain. Now, although the control wizard's seen a lot of changes in mod 16, it still has a lot of the same stuff from mod 15. There's just different powers you're using, different feats. A lot of things were changed, don't get me wrong. So, let's go ahead and first off, we will talk about the gear. Now, what I'm using probably won't be the same as some what other people are using. But this, like I said, is what works best for me, and I'm going to tell you why. So as far as the headpiece goes, currently I am using the Mana Lord's Assault Pitassos. But that is not what I'm going to be using for Mod 16. In Mod 16, I am going to be using the new one you can get, which I do not have yet. And if you go to items under the collection book, and then you go down to Epic Equipment, you could see... Galleon armor now Galleon armor it has these things right here um, these are all the Galleon different things you can get that are item level 600 once you progress far enough in the campaign and do the uh, hardcore dungeons which I have not done yet but I do plan on using this gallant assault cap it says when you kill an enemy has an equip bonus your damage increases by 5% for 5 seconds with a 30 second cooldown that's not honestly really that great compared to the one that I have now, which will give me when my health is 50% or more, your critical strike is increased by 1500. When your health is below 50%, life steal is increased by 2000. The thing is for me specifically is I can get my critical chance at 100% without the needed 1500 that I'm going to get from the Mana Lord's Assault Patasso's Equip bonus. Thus, if I use the Galleon Assault Cap, I will actually be gaining more hit points for more survivability and more damage from um, the Paladins or of Courage if you run with one, I will be getting about, you know, 293 more Critical Strike. So basically, I'm only getting about 1,200 less Critical Strike by using the other piece, and I will be getting a little bit more Armor Pen and a little bit more Defense as well. So this is the headpiece that I will be using. Now, obviously, if you don't have access to it, you probably still want to be using the Mana Lord's Assault Patassos. As far as armor goes, still best in slot inside of Mod 16 is going to be the Hags Rags, which you can get these by doing Barovia Hunts. It comes from one of the specific posters. As far as arms goes, still for me, the Terror Grips are going to be best in slot. In Mod 16, your encounter powers do 3% more damage, and, and you get a lot of recovery. I'm sorry, not recovery. You get a lot of armor pen and power and hit points with these as well. These you can also get by doing a poster hunt inside of Barovia. Now, for the main hand, with the ones you want to be using, your main hand and offhand, you want to be using the Masterwork 3 Stronghold Weapon Set. So, you got the Obsidian Mist Tenhayu and the Fanged Quillapilla. Now, I am using the Plus 1 um, Exalted Obsidian Mist Tenhayu. Obviously, if you have the money for it, it is going to give you more damage, 
but it's not necessary. You can still go with the regular one, and then in order to exalt these, you actually have to go ahead and make sure you run Cradle of the Death God once every week to get your weekly ampule. Once you get enough, you can go ahead and you can exalt your offhand and your main hand. Now, I would recommend for you guys, if you're going to try to focus on a plus one piece, only go for the main hand, because the plus one stats on the offhand are just going to give you a little bit more power, critical strike, and recovery, and it's not that much more. Um, that's the reason why I don't have it, because, I mean, if I can get it for really, really cheap, I'd get it, but it's not really needed at all. As far as feet go, the ones that I'm using right now are the Shoes of Superstition. And it has an equip bonus that says, At the start of combat, you will be surrounded by a ring of lucky trinkets for 7 seconds. If you pick up all the trinkets before they disappear, you will gain 1500 power and 1500 defense for 15 seconds. Also, the equip bonuses on these give power. But once again, these are not the shoes that I'm going to be using. As a matter of fact, you can go with the um, item level 550 ones from Barovia, which are actually better than these in theory. But the ones that I'm going to be using, once again, are going to be in the collection guide, and it is going to be the Galliant ones, which are right here. And it says, these have an equip bonus at the start of combat. You summon a flying sword to fight for you for 10 seconds with a 30 second cooldown. They're item level 600, but they will give me more armor pen, a lot more recovery, and some more maximum hit points, and they will take away some power. Now, I don't care about power because when you go high in power with power share classes and endgame groups, an extra couple thousand power basically is not going to do anything for you at all. But having more recovery on a control wizard is probably the best stat to stack on a control wizard right now. Since a lot of our damage comes from our encounter powers and our dailies, we want to try to use our encounter powers especially disintegrate as much as we can so by stacking recovery and getting as high amount of cooldown time we as we can would be greatly beneficial to our class let's go ahead and go into the rest of the armor for the neck piece now, this is where it's going to differ or differ from some people. Yes, the Demo Gorgon set is probably still best for damage, according to a lot of people. But me personally, I like the Fanged Beaded Amulet set, the Masterwork set. So I have the Fanged Beaded Amulet plus one and the Beaded Sash plus one. The reason why I like the Fanged Beaded set is because of two reasons. Number one, I'm going to be getting action points by 4% every 3 seconds while in combat, so action points is always good. And with the waste, I'm going to be getting 2 to my intelligence and 2 to my charisma, which are much better stats than the Demogorgon set can provide. But, the Demogorgon set will still give you the basically up to 20% increased damage against the target. But you're never really going to be getting that 20% all the time. In theory, you're probably on average going to be getting about a 10% damage increase with the Demogorgon set. But with the Beaded set, you will get around a 5% damage increase bonus. So yeah, the Demogorgon set theoretically is actually still better. You're probably going to do another like 5% more damage with that set. Maybe, theoretically. Um, but see, here's the thing. This Fang Beaded set or this, I guess you could call it, uh, call it this masterwork set, actually provides to you a lot more stats. A lot more. I mean, if you look at the Demo Gorgon set, man, it's such an outdated set. I mean, it's item level 405, and the stats on it are pretty much useless for control wizards. With this set, look at this. I'm getting 1,800 power, 1,135 critical strike, and 1,135 recovery just with the neck. And then on the waist, I'm getting two intelligence, two charisma, more power, more more critical strike and more recovery. Now this is the plus one item level 570 variation of this set. Not everybody will be able to afford this one. If you want to go with the regular non plus one, it's still, you know, just as good. But from the testing that I did, from me switching from the Demo Gorgon set to the Beaded Sash and the and the uh, the Fang Beaded Amulet Masterwork set, I actually got an additional over 6,400 recovery by using this. And 6,400 recovery is a ton. It allows you to spam your encounter, pounders, your encounter powers way more often. So yeah, although it's doing less damage than the Demo Gorgon set, is it really? Because... Over a course of a 15-20 second fight, I'm going to be able to get off another 1-2 to two encounter powers, more or less 1, one more encounter power of each one of my encounter powers doing 100% more damage with all those encounter powers that I wasn't able to get off with the Demo Gorgon set because now I have a lot more recovery. So me personally, I use this set. 
Also, you could see that on this set, it's um, it's actual set bonus. It says when you use an encounter power, you gain a stack of al alacrity or something like that. It says granting 500 recovery and 1,000 movement for five seconds, and it stacks up to three times. So basically, we're always using encounter powers. We're always going to be having an additional 1,500 recovery and 3,000 movement. But the big key is the 1,500 recovery. Also, by using this set, it made me, since I have so much more critical strike and stuff now, it made me have to take critical strike out of some other things, and I was able to put more recovery inside of them, thus making my recovery much higher. So for the neck and the waist, I use the Fang Beaded Amulet plus one, and the Beaded Sash plus one, but you could still use the Demo Gorgon set if you want. This just works better for me, and I like the stats more, and I like to be able to have a lot more recovery more, so I could spam Disintegrate more, and spam my encounter powers more. As far as my rings go, I have the Ring of Offensive Action, and I have the Ring of the Shadow Stalker plus four. Still to this day, after almost seven months of running two characters a day through Fane, I still have not been able to obtain the Ring of the Shadow Stalker plus five. So in theory, if you wanted to have the best setup, you want to have the Ring of the Shadow Stalker plus four, and the Ring of the Shadow Stalker plus five, and not the Ring of Offensive Action. But if you don't have the Ring of the Shadow Stalker plus five, then you want to go ahead and, you know, use the plus four if you have it, and the Ring of Offensive Action. As far as the shirt goes, I am using still the Upper Primal Paints right now. Your daily powers do 3% more damage on the equip bonus. It's, you know, still really good to use for a Control Wizard, because we use dailies a lot, and our dailies do a lot of damage. The pants I'm using are the new Shimmer Weave Pants Plus One. Equip bonuses gain 100 movement for each enemy you're engaged with battle with. It's not really that great, but the stats are really good on it. You get a little bit more power, critical strike, and defense. Now, as far as the, um, what are, what are those things called? Enchantments and things I use inside my equipment. In all of my utility slots, I use Dark Enchantment Rank 14s for added movement. Movement is one of the best things in the game. I talked about this before, it enables you to actually move much faster through dungeons and get clear speeds much faster and then continuously farm things much faster. As far as overload slots, I use the Greater Red Dragon Glyphs. The reason I like these is because they round out my armor penetration good and they do an additional hit of 600 damage as fire damage on every single part of damage or tick that we do, so it adds up quite a lot and they're moderately cheap. In my armor, I've talked about this in the past, I use an unparalleled Soul Forge enchantment. I still think that Soul Forge is best for me to use and probably best for lots of people to use because it will resurrect you if you go down, thus saving you a scroll. And you really don't go down too much anyway, so if you were to go down, it'll save you a scroll. And adding up all the amount of money or all the tons of money I probably saved on uh, scrolls, yeah, this definitely paid for itself already. Now, you don't have to have it at unparalleled. You could have it at lesser. But I made a video all about this in the past about, you know, the best um, armor enchantments to use and I still think personally for me that I like to use Soul Forge a lot more. In my defensive slot, I use all Radiant enchantments in all of my defensive slots, rank 14 for more maximum hit points, for more survivability, and for more Aura of Courage damage bonus. In my arms, same exact thing. Overload, Greater Red Dragon, Utility, Dark Enchantment. My main hand, I use in all of my offensive slots, I use Cruel Enchantments rank 14, which give me more power and more recovery, because I like recovery. Also for my weapon enchantment, I use the Unparalleled Dread Enchantment. It deals 55% weapon damage as necrotic damage to target enemies every second for 4 seconds when you activate a power. It reduces the defense of PvP targets by 45% and the damage resistance of PvE targets by 5%. Also, once every 5 seconds, you reduce the target enemy's damage resistance by 5% for 4 seconds when you land a critical strike. The cool thing about the Dread Enchantment is that it is the only weapon enchantment in the game that has a stacking debuff, so even if you get into a group where all 5 people are using this, it will stack. But the big thing about this one is that it says encounter powers critical severity is increased by 80%. That is a ton, specifically because we do most of our damage, probably 80% of our damage from our encounter powers, especially disintegrate now. So by having more critical severity on our encounter powers, they will hit way harder. So I definitely will use the unparalleled dread enchantment and cruels in all my offensive slots. If you look at my talisman, 
And this one I am using on the offensive slot. I'm using the Heart of Fire enchantment just because it's bound to character and I got it for free. So yeah, I use that, but normally I would be using a Cruel, but hey, it's basically almost the exact same thing. If you have this, use this. Defensive Radiant enchantment. Feet, obviously utility, Dark enchantment. Neck piece here. Dark enchantment in the uh, utility slot. Cruel enchantment in the offensive slot. In the ring, two Cruel enchantments in both offensive slots. In the other ring, two Cruel Enchantments in both offensive slots. In the Waste, Dark Enchantment and Utility for Movement, Radiant Enchantment and Defense for the Hit Points. In the Shirt, Offensive, once again, Cruel Enchantment, all rank 14s. In the Pants, once again, Radiant Enchantment, rank 14. So, this is the gear that I'm using. All of that good stuff. Those are all the enchantments I'm using. As far as artifacts go, artifacts you want to basically use ones that you need the stats for. You want to be at 100% critical hit chance, 100% armor pen, and as high as recovery as you possibly can get. So for me, I use the fragmented key of stars, the symbol of air, the Lantern of Revelation, and as my active artifact, I used the Decanter of Atropal Essence. I made a video all about this, about the best area of effect artifact in the game. It is still the best area of effect artifact in the game to give you the most damage when you're using AoE. Also, I forgot to mention, I have three different builds that I use at three different times, but mostly two. So this build that I've been talking about all this time, if you look at the top right upper hand corner, it says AOE main. So this is my main build for area of effect. So this build that I'm showing you is for area of effect, but from the single target build and for the support build, not much changes. And I'm going to go ahead and get into that later in the video. As far as my mounts go, I mean, obviously you could use any mount you want for your skin, my combat power I'm using is the Commander Tyrannosaurus Rexum, which lowers the enemy's defenses by 10%. It's a legendary mount. If you have it, use it. If you don't have this one, use whatever legendary mount you have. I use the Rapid Recovery Equip Power from the Tenzer's Floating Disc to get me 4,000 more recovery, because like I said, it's all about recovery for the Control Wizards now. As far as my uh, insignia bonuses go for my stable, I use Gladiator's Guile. I move faster when my stamina is high, basically gives you 15% more movement speed. I use Assassin's Covenant. I lose 10% of my defense, deflection, and lifesteal and gain the lost combination, lost stats of power. Um, you could pretty much use this one or Shepherd's Devotion. I mean, you could use either one you want. I probably will switch this out for Shepherd's Devotion in the future. The next one I use is Magistrate's Patience. Whenever I perform a critical strike, my targets will take psychic damage equal to 10% of my power over 4 seconds. I always use this. Some people don't like it. I love it. I also use Artificer's Persuasion. Whenever I use an artifact power, my recovery, movement, action point gain, and stamina gain are increased by 10% of my power for 15 seconds. This really is a non-negotiable. And Protector's Camaraderie to gain more power and defense from my companion every time it attacks. Once again, non-negotiable. As far as, you know, the insignias that I have inside of here, you know, it's up to you guys. You know, like I said... Round them out, whatever you want for your stats. You want to be at 100% armor pen, 100% critical severity, and then get yourself whatever else you need. So I use, you know, some aggression ones. I use some mastery ones for more recovery. I even use vigor ones for more movement. I actually have one, two, three, four, five different vigor ones in. So I could have more critical strike. I could have more recovery. I could have more armor pen, but I really don't need critical strike or armor pen. So I'd rather have some movement. As far as my companions go, my summoned companion is the Cholton Tiger. Um, I have three Bonding Runestone rank 14s inside of him. And on his um, actual equipment, I use two Bronzewood Raid Rings plus one and an Electrum Raid Necklace plus one. So I have all the plus one equipment on him, as well as I'm using all rank 14 Black Ice enchantments to get as much power recovery and critical strike as I can. And I chose to use the Electrum Raid Necklace to go ahead and get the extra critical strike as well. Uh, as far as my other companions I'm using, I still think are best in slot, are the Razorwood for 25% more combat advantage and 2.5% and more critical severity, the Air Archon, the Earth Archon, and the Siege Master. Now, you could swap out the Siege Master if you want. If you're running Cradle of the Death God or T9, you could pretty much swap this out, and you can use uh, the Alpha Compi. 
the Alpha Copy is going to give you 5% more damage while you're in all of Cholt, so theoretically giving you 1% more damage, but I don't got time for all that. The 1% don't make a big difference to me. I just stick with the Siege Master personally, so those are the five companions that I'm using, all legendary. These are the things that I'm using on the Cholt and Tiger. Um, if you want to use Yojimbo, you could use him as well. I still like the Cholt and Tiger more personally. As far as boons go... I'm not going to spend much time going into these. If you want to look at them, then pause the screen. Now, obviously, you guys know that I started up a new guild a couple months ago. My guild is currently rank 13, so I don't even have all of the item level from the boons or all the maximum boons yet. Um, so, I don't have them all yet. We're working on it. I'm Obviously, for offense, I use the power boon. Defense, um, I actually, we just started building the hit point boon. That's the one you should be using. I didn't even have that on. So, the hit point boon. Utilities, whatever you want to use. I use the Mount Speed 1 and PvP. It doesn't even matter. Acquisitions Incorporated. I don't have any of the boons from here yet, but the ones I'm gonna, that I'm personally going to be using is probably this one, Damage Against Cultists, because I really don't need defense. I don't need any more Critical Strike. I don't really need power. 1,000 power ain't going to do nothing for me. I don't really care about gold at the moment. So maybe I'll probably use Critical Strike or this one. Who knows? Um... The bottom ones are okay. The top ones, though, in this are really, really good. 3% more life still. You could use that if you need to. 3% more critical severity. Obviously, a little bit added damage, movement, or recovery. Me, personally, when I get this um, boon, I'm going to be using the 3% more recovery one. Because, like I said before, with Control Wizards now, it's all about stacking recovery to do as many encounter uh, powers as you can. Sharandar, these are the boons that I use. Pause it if you like to see it. Dread Ring, these are the boons that I use. Pause it if you'd like to see it. Icewind Dale, these are the boons that I use. Once again, pause it if you'd like to see it. Under Dark, these are the boons that I use. Pause it if you'd like to see it. Tyranny of Dragons, these are the boons that I use. Pause it. Maze Engine, these are the boons that I use. Pause it if you'd like to see more. Elemental Evil, these are the boons that I use. Now, these boons are not probably going to be the same for everybody. Like I said, if you're not in game and you still need more stats in specific areas, switch some things out for yourself. These are the ones that I use that work the best for me. Storm King's Thunder. Pause them if you want to see them. These are the ones I use. Cloak Descendancy. Some of the worst boons in the entire game. These are the ones that I use. Pause them if you want to see them. Jungles of Cholt. These are the ones that I use. Pause them if you want to see them. Ravenloft, these are the ones that I use. Pause them once again if you want to see them. And then that is it. Those are all the boons. Now, the boons will not differ from build to build. It's Once again, it's still, you know, all the same, more or less, for if you're using whatever build you're using. But like I said, this is the AoE main build. Now, let's go ahead and get into the feats that I use. Um, uh, under the heroic one. Um, also, I am using the Dragonborn race. You could probably use the human race. It'll probably be a little bit better for you, but Dragonborn is still good. And personally, I like the way the Dragonborn looks a whole lot better, so that's why I use it. But you could use either the Dragonborn or the human. The human, like I said, is probably going to be a little bit better for you. But on the first sheet, since I don't have the three extra heroic points, um, I use two in controlling action, three in toughness, um, if you don't have 100% critical chance, you could use some in Weapon Mastery, but I don't need it. Two in Fight On, three in Wizard's Wrath, two in Arcane Enhancement, three in Blighting Power, five in Learn Spellcaster. This is what I use for my AoE build. On my AoE build, what I use is I use the Oppressor um, Paragon still. I use five points in Bitter Cold, five points in Severe Reaction, five points in Frigid Winds, Five points in Icy Veins, five points in Controlled Momentum, one point in Shatter Strike, then five points in Malvalent Surge in the Thom Paragon, five points in Destructive Wizardry, and five points into Elemental Reinforcement. Reason I use Oppressor for AoE is because most of the time me and my team are running through mobs extremely, extremely fast. So this offers my teammates, um, basically, and myself to do 10% more damage to foes that have been frozen which I will be doing all the time since I'm using Icy Veins, 
and controlled momentum will also make me and my allies and counterpowers do 10% more damage as well. So this is basically 20% more damage all the time, plus the Shatter Strike is still going to do damage to non-controllable targets. So this is why I use Oppressor for AoE. I feel it absolutely works the best. Um, so, yeah. But it's not the same for the boss loadout, though. Which I will get into right now. Or pretty soon, after I show you guys the powers. So, this is what I use for AoE. Pause it, look at it, all that good stuff. Five here, five there, five there, you see them. Now, as far as powers go, I use different ones. I use Entangling Force on my RB, on my Spell Mastery tab. I use Oppressive Force as far as one of my dailies. I use Chilling Presence as one of my class features. I use Icy Terrain. I use Storm Pillar as well as Ray of Frost, but I barely ever use my At Wills. I use Ice Knife. I use Storm Spell as my other class feature. Ice Knife as my other daily. I use Still Time as my other encounter. And last but not least, I use Disintegrate. So these are the powers that I use inside of my AoE build Control Wizard. And basically, the reasons why I use Ray of Enfeeblement on my Spell Mastery is because inside of this mod, you want to really be trying to maximize your Arcane stacks as much as possible. Um, you want to maximize your Chill stacks, obviously, to get the most damage, but you really want to try to maximize your Arcane stacks as well to get the most damage from your Arcane powers. So I like to use, um, what is this thing called? Entangling Force on a Spell Mastery tab on RB, on the Xbox controller, because every single time that you use it on an enemy, you pull the other surrounding enemies in, and for every enemy you hit, you gain a stack of Arcane Mastery. So, for instance, if I use it on this target dummy here, and you look at my, my toolbar at the top left, my buff bar, you'll see that when I use it, I already got three stacks of Arcane Mastery, because I pulled all three of these, you know, guys next to me. If there was five guys, I would get all five max stacks of Arcane Mastery immediately. And it works from a good distance, and it actually is a crowd control effect, because when you have an enemy that's able to be controlled, which are a lot of the mobs, you can just go ahead and hit it on them and choke them in the air, and this actually does a lot of damage. I mean, look at all those damage over time numbers coming up. It's pretty amazing. So I like to use Entangling Force on, on Spell Mastery to keep up my Arcane stacks as much as I can. Um, your rotation could be, you know, however you really want it to be, but what I would recommend for you to do is when you go into a mob fight, go out, lead with icy terrain, apply chill to all the enemies, then entangle in force to go ahead and build your arcane stacks, spell, um, still time to go ahead and hit everybody, and then finish off single target enemies with, um, disintegrate. Obviously mix in your, your, uh, your dailies with that as well, your oppressive force and things like that. So when I usually go in, it's going to be something like this. And then, you know, hit a daily here, get my all my spell mastery, hit my disintegrate, icy terrain again. And you can see how fast I get back all of my encounter powers. And I'm not even using spell twisting. And this is without any other class providing me an encounter cooldown bonus. It's pretty awesome with all the extra recovery I have on this class. That's why I said it's really, really important to stack as much recovery as you can. As a matter of fact, my disintegrate... Um, I could call out my Disintegrate once every 3.2 seconds. With the amount of recovery I have, I'm able to call in my Disintegrate every 3.2 seconds. I mean, look at my recovery. It's 22,785, and I'm actually able to get it higher than that. So once again, once you hit the three stacks from your, you know, set, 22,785 recovery all the time. Boom, just able to hit Disintegrate every 3.2 seconds. It's pretty friggin' awesome. Plus all the other powers cool down really fast too. I'm able to get my daily back really quickly. It's amazing. So that's my rotation, me personally, what I use for um, AOE. Now I'm going to show you guys the boss build, the single target build. Not a lot changed, but some things definitely did change. So go to character sheet, load out boss. So now as far as the single target boss build goes, not much has really changed. The only, none of the gear has changed at all. None of the enchantments have changed at all. The only thing on the front page that has changed is now I do not use the decanter of Atropal Essence. Now I use the Soul Sight Crystal as my um, active artifact. As far as my powers go, those are a little bit different as well. Feats now is a lot different. Now if you look at Heroic, I have 5 points into Controlling Action. 
Three points into toughness. Two points into fight on. Two points into blighting power. Three points into arcane enhancement. Three points into focus wizardry. And two points into learn spellcaster. Now I am in the renegade paragon path. Where I have five points into critical power. Five points into arcane burst. Five points into abyss of chaos. Five points into phantasmal destruction. And five points into uncontrolled obliteration. Obviously one point into chaos magic. And then I have five points into tempest magic in the thumb paragon. And five points into malvalement surge. As well as five points into elemental reinforcement. So these are the feats that I use for the single target boss build. The boons stay exactly the same. The companions stay exactly the same. The mounts stay exactly the same. Everything is exactly the same except for the feats. What you see here, Renegade Paragon with, with the feats that I use. Now, if you don't have somebody else in your party that is supplying combat advantage to you and your party, you probably want to use Nightmare Wizardry, but I usually always run with a combat HR who's always using Aspect of the Pack, which will give the entire team combat advantage anyway. So as long as you have somebody, you know, providing you combat advantage, you don't want to use Nightmare, Nightmare Wizardry, but if you're not running with classes that will provide you combat advantage, then you probably want to pick this up. As far as the powers I go, on this build you have a couple different things you can use. I like to use, also I forgot to talk about this, but for my AoE build it was the Spellstorm um, Paragon Path. And for my boss build I go down Master of Flame Paragon Path. So for AoE, Spellstorm. For boss, single target, Master of Flame. So inside of this build what I like to use is I like to use Ray of Enfeeblement, Icy Terrain, Fanning the Flame and disintegrate now really to optimize this what you really want to do is you want to use ray of enfeeblement on your spell mastery rb button and then use disintegrate on any other encounter button but then when the boss gets low in damage you want to go ahead and switch them out but i don't really have time to do that and we melt things so fast as it is that i just keep disintegrate on rb so i use icy terrain to still apply chill stacks and then i use Ray of Enfeeblement to so apply a debuff to the boss. I use Fanning the Flame to keep up smolder damage. And then I use Disintegrate to do, you know, mostly all your damage. And when the enemy is below 25% health, you gain additional damage bonus. Now, as far as the powers go, under certain things that also have changed, is that with the boss build, I still use Chilling Presence. And instead of me using the other thing, now I use Arcane Power Field. It says when you activate a daily power, you gain arcane power field for 8 seconds. What arcane power field does is it doubles the damage bonus granted by the stacks of arcane mastery and causes the enemies within 30 feet of you to take damage every 2 seconds. Really, what this is doing is buffing our disintegrate. So the more arcane mastery stacks we have, it will do double the amount of damage. So... It's really, really important to stack your Arcane Mastery stacks. By using it this way, you're going to be able to gain one Arcane Mastery stack for every Arcane power you use. In this case, Ray of Enfeeblement and um, Disintegrate. So, there's one right there. There's two. You can see at the top toolbar, you see it has two. Now, you use it again. There's three. Now, you use Ray of Enfeeblement. There's four. Or, I'm sorry, five. Now, I use Disintegrate. And now I got, you know, a big damage bonus because I had all five stacks. As long as you're using these arcane powers, you know, once every couple seconds, they will refresh and keep stacking. You also want to make sure you keep up, you know, some form of chill on the, on the enemy so you can maximize your chilling uh, advantage bonus. So, yeah, that's the boss thing. And obviously use Ice Knife as well for single targets. And then use your Soul Sight Crystal. So, honestly, the rotation is how, you know, however you want to use it when you have what available. But, you know, the best rotation you could possibly probably use is you want to start off by using your Icy Terrain to apply Chill. Using Ray of Enfeeblement for the debuff. Then using the Fanning the Flame to stack the um, Fire Damage. Disintegrate. Icy Terrain again. Apply the Smolder. Blah, blah, blah use your daily whenever you have it you, you mean you get it it's if you've been playing control wizard you probably get it by now but these are the powers that i use inside of my single target boss build like i said you more than welcome to swap out disintegrate on spell mastery and use um ray of enfeeblement 
Um, and that will help you guys clear bosses a little bit faster. If you're in a team that's not melty enough and that's struggling a little bit, but in the teams I run, we pretty much demolish everything very quickly. So really, really no need for it. The Control Wizard could do a ton of damage in this mod. A ton of damage, which is good because the Control Wizards, you know, were always lacking in damage. I mean, they still able to control pretty well, but they do some decent damage inside of this mod too if you know how to build them. I mean, you could see that my Disintegrate Man is over here hitting for you know, two and a half million unbuffed right now. It's it's pretty crazy. And if I was to use, you know, like a power, then when I get the arcane enhancement, you know, it hits for way, way more. Unfortunately, it doesn't always show it on the test dummies, but it hits for way more. So anyway, that is the boss build. Like I said, from the AOE build, nothing really changed except for a couple different powers and your feats. No boons changed, no companions changed, no mounts changed. Nothing really has changed at all. Then I have one last feat, or one last build, that I use. And I only use this build when I am running Cradle of the Death God, or another dungeon, with another control wizard. This is the only time I use this build, is when I'm running Cradle with another control wizard that is running the Renegade Path. On bosses, control wizards should be running Renegade pretty much all the time. But if I'm running with another control wizard that is using Renegade, then I made a support build. Strictly support. Like, really no damage. And really, this is not much change than this at all either. Um, you're still going to be using Master of Flame as the Paragon path, but you're going to be using different feats and different boons. So, for support, I run these things in Heroic. Weapon Mastery, because I need more critical chance on this build. Toughness. Wizard's Wrath. Fight On. Three points in Blighting Power. Three points in Arcane Enhancement. One point in Learn Spellcaster. And three points in the Prestidation, because I'm trying to, you know, buff. I'm trying to support. I'm giving my allies more increased stat ratings. Inside of this build, I also use Oppressor, once again, to support. I'm giving all my, you know... I'm giving all my uh, allies controlled momentum, 10% more damage buff. I'm doing the shatter strike thing, making the boss, you know, hit me or hit uh, hit us way less harder. These are the things that I'm using for my support build. Boons are the same. Companions are the same. Mounts are the same. Powers are different. So with my powers, I am using icy terrain to apply some chill to proc frigid winds. I am using Fanning the Flame just to apply Smolder damage. I'm using Steel Time. And then most importantly on this build, I am using Ray of Enfeeblement on Spell Mastery. Because once again, we are supporting, we are buffing, we are debuffing. We're not trying to do damage in this build. We're trying to just attack things to spread buffs and debuffs. Under Powers... What I'm using is Combustive Action. When one of my Smolder targets is killed, I gain 1% of my max action points. In addition, all of your daily powers now add Smolder to those affected targets, and those targets have their damage resistance reduced by 6%. Once you have 4 points into this, it actually is a 24% debuff, which is awesome for you and your entire party. Then by using Ray of Enfeeblement on Spell Mastery, you basically will debuff it by a ton. So more debuffing. Then I also use Swath of Destruction. Increases Smolder damage and targets affected by Smolder take slightly more damage. So all targets that have Smolder on them will take 20% more damage from me and all my allies. And all targets should have Smolder damage on them when I use a daily power. So use a daily. For instance, we'll use this one right here, Furious Immolation. Now all targets are affected they have a 24% debuff on them and a 20% more increased damage buff on them as well. Then once I hit this, give them controlled momentum, that's another 10% more damage. They're frozen, giving them more damage from Frigid Winds and Ray of Enfeeblement. You catch the drift. A support control wizard could probably combine debuff, buff the enemy, and buff you guys by a substantial amount, well over 50%. So it's pretty awesome. But like I said, I only use this build if I'm running with another control wizard that is using Renegade. That is the only time I use this build. Only. 90% of the time, I'm inside AoE main because I'm doing, you know, running around doing like campaigns and little other things and inside of, you know, dungeons. As soon as I get to the campfire by a boss, I'll switch from AoE main to um, boss. 
Oh, one thing I forgot to add is on my support build. Another thing that changed is the artifact that I use. I use the Lantern of Revelation so I can increase the damage that the boss takes by 16% for 6 seconds for me and all my allies. So, on my support build, I use the Lantern of Revelation. On my AoE main build, I use the Cancer of Atropal Essence. And on my boss build, I use the Soul Sight Crystal. That's why it's important for you guys to have multiple builds. If you're not going to have three builds like me, at least have two. At least have your Area of Effect build and your single target build. Area of Effect build, me being my AoE main build, I showed you guys in the video already. And the boss build, I showed you guys inside of the video already. So, that is my builds that I am using in Neverwinter in Mod 16 for the Control Wizard. This is all my gear. I know this is a longer video. I tried not to make it as long as it was, but I wanted to make sure I explained to you guys everything that I'm using. Um, this is all the stuff that I've been testing for the past couple weeks since we had Mod 16 on consoles, and I feel very confident that these are the best things for me to use, and this is how I get the most damage and help my team the most. These are the things that I use. This is not necessarily the things that you want to use, but these are the things that I use, which I feel work best for me inside of the game. So anyway, man, I hope you guys did enjoy this video. Like I said in the beginning of the video, if you did, please go ahead and hit that thumbs up like button. If you have not subscribed to my channel, make sure you do as well also leave a comment down below let me know are you using some of the same stuff that i'm using you know what are you using you know have you tried different things you know blah 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 like i said i've pretty much tried every single feat in this game every single power it's not like we have many of them and i feel that these builds are by far the best ones that i'm actually using at this time in the game and i've went through all of them for weeks and these are the ones that i feel certain will give you the best you know best moves in the game so anyway hope you guys enjoyed the video if you have any comments or any questions about the control wizard at all leave a comment down below and you guys know as always i do read the comments and i will try to answer them for you as fast as i can so anyway youtube this is the assist man and until next time i am out